Welcome to episode number two from menu 12A. And in this episode, we're going to learn in more detail the structure of a DNA nucleotide. Remember in chapter two, we went over that just a little bit. Now we want to start off with what is the job of DNA. And in chapter two, you, you learn that DNA is used in heredity. In other words, passing information from one generation to the next. And it's used during the process of producing proteins called protein synthesis. And we're going to learn about that in another menu. But we'll touch on it here just a little bit. Now, DNA is made up of little subunits called a gene. Now, a gene has the instructions to produce a single protein. So I want you to remember this rhyme. One gene equals one protein. In other words, one gene has the information to produce a single protein. Now, the genes in DNA can do a couple of things. Number one is it can store the information that's found in cells. Number two, these genes can be copied through a process of replication, which we're going to learn about on the next menu. And then this information can be passed on to the next generation during a process called mitosis that we're going to learn on, you guessed it, another menu. Now, I do want you to pay attention to a section in your book, and this is found on page 342. Now, if you have the iBooks version on your iPad, you'll find it on page 581. Now, the book uses the analogy of a book. And remember that a book is used to store information. In other words, your biology book stores a ton of information that you will consult on time to time. Now, remember, you can go to a photocopier and you can copy the information in your book. Same thing with Facts. DNA. We can make a copy of our DNA. And then we can take this copy and we can give it to the other. So what will happen in the cell is that this copy of DNA will be given to the next generation. So let's learn about the structure of DNA so that later we can understand how it makes this copy a little bit easier. All right. Now, remember in Chapter 2, that all polymers are made up of a monomer. And the monomer of DNA, DNA being the polymer, is called a nucleotide. Now, nucleotides have three parts, sugar, a phosphate, and a base. Now, in DNA, the sugar is called deoxyribose. It's actually the D in DNA. The other part is the phosphate group, which is just a phosphate surrounded by some oxygens for the most part. And then we have a nitrogenous base. Now this is a base, remember it would be above 7 on the pH scale and it's got nitrogen in it. That's why it's called nitrogenous. Now let's focus in down on this picture down below. Now the 5 carbon sugar is the pentagon. Remember a pentagon has 5 sides. And over on to the left, kind of coming out of the chimney, is the phosphate group. And then to the right, in green, are going to be these carbon rings that contain nitrogen. Now, these um, nitrogenous bases really come in two flavors. Some of them have a single ring. Those are called a pyrimidine. And some of them have a double ring. And those are called a purine. And let's learn a little bit more about those on the next slide. All right. Now, there are four different types of nitrogenous bases found in a DNA nucleotide. And they are adenine guanine, thymine, and cytosine. Now most of the time we're not going to write out adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. That's just way too many letters. We're just going to use A, T, G, and C. Now remember we talked about in the previous slide that DNA nucleotides, or I'm sorry, the nitrogenous bases are going to have a single ring or a double ring. Those double ring ones are called a pure ring. And two of the bases are going to be purines, and those are adenine and guanine. Now, I have a really simple, goofy way to remember this. Purine reminds me of the company Purina that makes dog food and cat food. Well, Purina is really an agricultural company because the number one thing that makes up cat and dog food from that company is going to be corn. So, remember, Purine is an agricultural company. Agriculture can be uh, referred to by the acronym of AG, AG, so remember, Purine, Purina, which is an agricultural company, ANG. I know it's kind of dumb, but it works for me. Now remember, Purines have a double ring. 
In other words, you need two bags of Purina dog food. A and G. One bag of A, one bag of G. Kind of goofy. Works for me, so we're just going to go for it. Now, the pyrimidines are a single ring, and those would be C and T, so cytosine and thymine. Now, pyrimidines remind me of the pyramids that you would find in Egypt. Now, there's another base that we're going to talk about when we get to RNA, and that's uracil. So I always remember this as you want to cut down the pyramids. In other words, C-U-T, the three nitrogenous bases, cut down the pyramids. All right. So now you know the difference between purines and pyrimidines. I want you to remember that a purine is always going to pair with a pyrimidine. And these are Chargolf's rules of base pairing. In other words, Chargolf is the guy that figured this out. He didn't really know how they paired up, but what he figured out was if you looked at a sample of DNA, if it's 25%, uh, let me phrase this again, if it's going to be 20% adenine, it's also going to be about 20% thymine. Now, 20 plus 20 equals 40, so there's 60% left. And he discovered that 30% of it would be guanine, and the other 30% would be cytosine. So Watson and Crick, once they figured out their model, they came up with Chargolf's rules of base pairs. And remember, A pairs with T, C pairs with G. And I have another great way for you to remember this. Take that G and that C on, on your notes and flip them so that G pairs with C. And remember, always together, good couple. Always together, good couple. In other words, A pairs with T, that's the always together, and G pairs with C, good couple. Now remember, a purine will always pair with a pyrimidine. There's a lot of different colors on this slide, and that should remind you that all this stuff is important. And I guarantee you're going to see this information on quizzes and tests in biology and genetics for the rest of your life. So until the next time, we're going to catch you on the flip side. What do you mean?